Greetings, uh, Chicagoland and the greater Major Taylor Trail uh, area. Um, thank you for tuning in again this month uh, to talk about all things Major Taylor Trail and the Major Taylor Trail community. This month, I have uh, two living legends uh, from our community. I have Keith Holt he, sitting here. He's a longtime trails and bike advocacy. Uh, he's the co-founder of the Friends of the Major Taylor Trail. He's also a co-founder of the Major Taylor Cycling Club Chicago, fondly known as MTC3. He actually worked at Chicagoland Bicycle Federation, which is now called Active Transportation Alliance, during the development of the Major Taylor Trail. Uh, bike and trail advocacy work he's done in Milwaukee, New Orleans. Uh, he's a board member with the Friends of the Big uh, Friends of the Big Marsh, and he currently works as sales manager at Will and Sprocket Oak Park, and has still been lending his expertise to the Major Taylor Trail. And then I have on my far uh, my far left, I have Peter Taylor. Now, Peter Taylor is a senior systems engineer for the University of Chicago Medicine. That's how he earns his living. He's worked there since 1988, but he's also a graduate of Stanford University and earned a certificate in project management from the University of Chicago. He has five children and is an original member of the Major Taylor Cycling Club Chicago, which is a group that was formed to help promote bicycling among Chicago's African-American community. Now, the Active Transportation Alliance gave Peter its Public Service Award at its 30th anniversary soiree for his efforts in getting the Major Taylor Trail off the ground and his work since 2002 to help ensure the trail lives up to its potential as a leader of the Friends of the Major Taylor Trail and a leader on the Major Taylor Trail Keepers organization. He has served as the trail leads number one advocate, pressing the city for equitable investments into the trail. He still resides in the Chicago neighborhood of the Roseland Heights, which is still our greater Major Taylor Trail area. So uh, I've done the bios and let's uh, go ahead and get started with um, finding out, picking your brains for what do you know? And I'll start with you, Keith. Um, I, now I understand both you and Peter were founding members of the Friends of the Major Taylor Trail. So can you tell me about the process, um, some of the challenges and celebrations of just establishing the Friends of the Major Taylor Trail organization? And then we'll dive into the trail, but I wanna understand just what happened, how, how did that get shaped and started, the Friends of the Major Taylor Trail? So uh, Friends of the Major Taylor Trail was started after the trail actually was officially opened. Okay. And early on, I have to remember early on, uh, the city of Chicago Park District and whatnot, they weren't as familiar with a linear trail to incorporate into their friends. Okay. Uh, friends of. So mm -hmm. it was actually a lot of push to actually do some bureaucracy to actually get it to be a trail, to be an officially known Friends of Major Taylor organization. Okay. Um, so had to do some advocacy uh, with uh, staff members on getting it to just say a Friends of Major Taylor trail could actually happen. I know there's folks who would think, well, there's a lakefront trail, but there's not a lake Friends of the Lakefront Trail. Okay, so yeah. if I understand correctly, one of the issues is the only other trail that was in the city was the Lakefront Trail at the time. At the time, there okay. might have been one that was like far north, north side, mm -hmm. but I think a lot of those were actually county or just not. They weren't not a park district one. Park district, but even okay. if it was, it was so early on that all resources and knowledge and institutional okay. knowledge really focus on the lakefront. And now we're talking about having a trail on the far southwest side. So that was kind of a new, a new phenomenon or idea with the Friends of the Park. It's a different press, okay. no, or the Park District. The Park District. The Park District. Okay. And so, and I want to make sure and give uh, Friends of the Park, who actually helped, mm -hmm. uh, help facilitate and work through those challenges okay. with the Park District to get the Friends of the Major Taylor Trail to be boom. It could exist. Exist as a friends, a subsidiary of the Friends of the Park, as the no, no. friends. No, it's still as always. The Chicago Park District mm -hmm. has their all their friends groups, groups advisory correct. groups. So getting the Park District to acknowledge 
that a Friends of Major Taylor Trail mm -hmm. can can exist. Okay. Okay. You know. So that was a big challenge. Mm -hmm. And and the, tell me if I'm um, if I'm understanding and paraphrasing correctly. Um, so Friends of the Parks had always existed, and there had been there a myriad of Friends of the whatever park in the city of Chicago with the Park District. Correct. Friends of or par or Friends of it's, a it's better call them park advisory councils. Park advisory councils is what they were called. Okay. Yeah, their they, their name might actually say something else, but they're park, park advisory, advisory councils. Council. Okay, so I'm understanding that, and so so technically the Major Taylor Trail, if I it is actually a ma the Major Taylor Park. Is that how it's re recorded with the city? Is it Major Taylor Park? I. I believe, so. I believe so. You believe so. Okay. Yeah. And so the, 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 the challenge was because it was a trail, but all of the other friends or, or advisory councils were actual parks. Is that where the challenge was? No, the challenge was because it was a linear park that wasn't attached to a fixed location of building. Aha. And all friends, all park advisory councils are attached to, to some, us. at that time. Okay are attached to some sort of brick and mortar place. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and at the time, I forgot what was the closest. Is it Ridge Park? I think, well, Ridge it, Park. actually it's... Um, there is one park that's, one that's park. close. Mm -hmm. Graver Park. Graver. Yeah, Graver uh, Park. It actually goes right, right by, by Graver Park. Okay. But, but Graver Park is a smaller park. Right. And, yeah. Does it even have a... So, it have, so it since, since okay. it didn't have a building, a building yeah. and therefore their, their procedures was that brick and mortar place. Uh -huh. Well, it doesn't have a brick and mortar place. In fact, one of the very early things immediately after the trail was open mm -hmm. was finding out that, okay, so this one said, gave me a number and talked to the person about getting it, making an official park advisory mm -hmm. council. Mm -hmm. The first thing that they said was, well, it can't. Why? Because it doesn't have a budget line item. Ah, so, so, why does it always seem to come back to numbers and dollars and cents? And the very and the very um, um, the park name, yeah. which is officially on the on the line item budget, is a number. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and so the name Major Taylor, you know, that's it's sort of like uh, when uh, you have five hundred one c threes that have their official name yes. as something, but they go doing business as yeah. So in a sense, a lot of these, just like Friends of Major Taylor Trail, they're the going, uh, doing as business as, mm -hmm. and versus their number name. Okay. Which would be really boring in a way. Yeah, <laughs> I care. understand. I understand. Um, and 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 I'm just gonna point out, and I don't want. I'm not gonna go too far off of because there's so much to talk about, and we only have mm -hmm. 25 minutes. But I just want to make the statement. There still is not a brick and mortar building associated with the trail. The, our relationship with the Cook County Forest Preserves, bless them, they have they have now formed a full alliance and partnership with the Major Taylor Trail Keepers, um, where they allow us to use their facility for our meetings. So, kind of getting close, but there isn't an official Chicago Park District brick and mortar property that we can associate with the trail. And that may be something for our aspirations. All right, so, so mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, and thank you for chiming in, Peter. Anything else you want to add to just some of the challenges and celebrations with just getting a Friends of the Major Taylor Trail Advisory Board established and recognized by the city uh, of Chicago, the Chicago Park District? Anything to add to that? So, uh, as I recall, <clears throat> uh, and Luann was here last week and she was telling us about how it was kind of designed by CDOT yeah. and uh, the Forest Preserve District started the initial development mm -hmm. of, the, of the trail as a Forest Preserve District type trail and then um, CDOT was doing their portion of it uh, mm -hmm. with what the whatever they had to buy in order to stitch the trail together and then Park District was brought in at the towards the end and so it was because we knew that the Park District had to operate it, it was important that we had status with the Chicago Park District, which is why okay. we um, got Friends of the Parks involved. And so we're kind of Friends of the Major Taylor Trail because of the Friends of the Parks helping us. And okay. um, we have to talk about Irma Tranter, who was the, the, um, the leader of Friends of the Parks, and she was one of the people that just really went in there and just 
went to went 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 at <laughs> people okay. to get them to acknowledge the trail and and, and what's and her name again? Her. Irma Tranter. Irma Tra She's maybe another person that we probably need to oh, interview absolutely. to get the full story of the history. Because uh, that's one of our goals on mm -hmm. the months that we're doing our show and we're on the trail. There's so I, what I've discovered in just the ten years that I've been doing this advocacy work, it's just such a rich history mm -hmm. of how the trail came about, how it got its name, its relationship with the, the, the Major Taylor Cycling Club. Uh, it, it's just a beautiful story. Mm -hmm. And the more I talk to people, the more I find. And one of these days, we're going we're gonna to get that book acknowledged and written. Uh, so I'll add her to our list. So, so one of the things I like to tease Keith about okay. is that when we started at the beginning, uh -huh. he just called a bunch of people and said, come on down, let's talk about this trail. <laughs> and he called it the Major Taylor Bike Society. Ah. And... Uh, okay. We were talking about the trail and about biking and a whole bunch of issues okay. around biking. Okay. And but we were focusing on on the trail, and it wasn't until <clears throat> the trail was officially open that we could become friends of the Major Taylor Trail and a Park Advisory Council. Okay. And uh, Keith specifically told me, "Yes, we you have to do this. You know, make become a Park Advisory Council so that you can have." Um, the uh, jurisdiction or okay. the, the access to the park district. So if I understand history correctly, because I've all you know, I've had private conversations with with uh, with Chuck Irvin. I've talked to Ed Dixon. I've talked to several Rob, several of our founding members of the cycling club. It sounds like Keith Hope was he was kind of the the behind the scenes mastermind behind all of this. Really becoming a community. I know he's not going to sit here and say it, but is that accurate that Keith Hope was kind of the powerhouse? driving and pushing a lot of this in I the community. He really brought the black cycling to um, the to the to the table. You know, on, okay. And and the South Side. I don't want to make it all about just the black the people, South, but yeah. about the people on the South Side. And it was, you know, we needed to have that yeah. um that presence. Yeah. Um, in the in the in the in the cycling community. Yeah, every every person that I was when I was doing my research for this show, every person that I privately spoke to and interviewed, his name came up. So, all right. So we talked yeah. about the uh, the the starting of the Friends of the Major Taylor Trail. Um, before I ask you if you because I'm going to ask you both to go back in time and ask what would you do differently. But before we do that, um, typically I do it as part of my intro, but. I don't want to do all the talking. I want you guys to do all the talking. Where is the trail located? Describe the trail for me and, and let our viewers know where is this trail? Um, and what is your favorite part of it? And then I'll go, I'll take you back in time and ask you if you could go back and do things differently, what would you do? So wh wh where's the trail at? Who, who wants to take that? I, we all know the answer, but who wants to give the answer? Where's the trail located? How would you describe it for our viewers? I could just, as a sort of a stump speech, I do this all the time, is uh, the Major Taylor Trail runs from uh, Dan Ryan Woods um, on the southwest side of Chicago down to Riverdale. Um, it's a, a linear trail of approximately eight miles that connects these two forest preserves together. And in the process, it goes uh, on an abandoned rail line, which makes it uh, a rails to, tra uh, rails to trail, it's what's called a rails to trail. Mm -hmm. um, through um, the south side, it touches five wards, um, probably four wards now. Yeah. Um, yeah because they've taken now. one away. It um, crosses um, probably seven major streets. It, it uh, crosses three uh, commuter rail lines. Uh, it's a, a very significant uh, feature um, for transportation and for fitness and wellness uh, on the south side okay. of Chicago. What are some of those major, major intersections and wh where's the Dan Ryan Woods located? Dan Ryan Woods is on uh, 87th and Western between uh, Western and Damon mm -hmm. on 87th Street. Okay. Um, and it's uh, actually the, one of the largest forest preserves and one of the busiest forest preserves mm -hmm. uh, in the forest preserve system. Okay, all righty. Well, so now um, I'm going to ask you both because uh, both of you were very instrumental, and I'll start with you, Keith, in the development and founding of the trail as well as the Friends. If you could go back in time, are there any things you would do differently? If I could go back in time, I'd actually want to go back even further before, like, my original time, is that I would make sure that <clears throat> the trail had a full plan. Okay. 
had a full plan that the Park District and CDOT would actually have an agreement mm -hmm. for Park District to take on the trail and have a plan related to that. Okay. The other thing that I would do, and this is truly something in hindsight, is that on the parts of the trail where the, you call it the easement, is wide, is mm -hmm. very wide, mm -hmm. after you making sure there's a plan to completely clear out uh, invasive species, I would have said remediate the soil and make uh, either uh, the opportunity for vegetable gardens mm. or then just make a bright, colorful native plants to go along the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, trees to be planted that would, in 30, 30 years, create a huge canopy for sections of the trail. Oh, yeah, that would be uh, beautiful. Those things, those are, those are kind of the, those are the not the usual things. Like, the usual things would have been, like, of course, we're talking about the uh, infrastructure uh, that mm -hmm. of crossing, like, 111th Street, uh, yeah. having signage along the way. Those things are... Those those would actually be in the plan, and those have been kind of standard. Yeah. But yeah. the things that... I wouldn't have, I wouldn't, I, I probably wouldn't have said, oh, no, we're not really going to care about that that much. But it's like, but in hindsight, it's like, yeah, we would have, I would have said, let's have gardening along the way. Oh, yeah, or even some community gardens. Peter, anything you want to add to that? Uh, yeah, there wasn't anything that I could have done, I don't think, any differently than what okay. I did. Okay. Uh, I think um, in hindsight, uh, there's a lot of perceptions, uh, so to speak, like um, when we got, um, finally got the trail opened mm -hmm. and they the park district said that this was going to be a trail I just thought that things were going to come together better than they did, they did yeah. and um, as as Keith said we didn't really press them on the issue of what exactly that, that you were going to do um, and then we've had mayors that were more pro bike uh, and some that were not yeah. so pro bike, and we probably could have gotten more out of those pro pro bike mayors. Yeah. Um, that had we you know pressed certain issues and really showed them um, the the dis the um, the disparities. But yeah. one of the best thing that happened for Major Taylor Trail, in some sense, um, not for everything else, was the um, um, the pandemic because the the neighborhood and the people just really needing something to do yeah. really found the major trail and trail and started really started to yes, to yes. use it and yes. uh, so I think um, that that that's helped a lot with just the awareness of, of where it is and what it can do for you. Okay, another uh, just real this is a short answer question uh, because as I've been doing my research, I have heard several different years given. What year was the trail actually? Uh, officially a trail because I hear I hear there's I think there's a year that it was established and then there was a different year that it was finished do either of you can either of you tell me what what year did we actually finish like it was officially this is the major Taylor trail so um Peter will know the exact year but I can tell you why is there such a such a incompleteness to it yeah, different answers that I get. So, yeah. when the trail was was semi-technically finished, mm -hmm. like pavement and everything, mm -hmm. that is one year, which is probably like 2000... 2001, maybe? One, 2001, one, okay. Two, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where pavement is like... Tw the pavement was down. The yellow, the yellow, the yellow paint down mm -hmm. the center. No, 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 no yellow, yellow paint. Okay, no okay. Yellow. 2001, paint. the yeah. pavement was down. Yeah. Okay. So, so now... This is where eventually I get involved. I'm hired by Chicago Bike Federation. Mm -hmm. And one of my first two tasks was to get the Major Taylor Trail open. Okay. Was it named the Na Major Taylor Trail in 2001 when the pavement went down? I don't think so. Okay. No, no, that's what it was. It was known as that. Okay, it was? Okay. But, it, but again, remember we said earlier, it's not officially. It's, it's not, not official. official. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was known as that. And so... So here's the thing, and I think some people forgive about this. The Park District and CDOT mm -hmm. didn't actually say the trail was open when when we had this celebration. Aha, uh -huh. okay. We just did it. Mm -hmm. Okay, was this one of those times that Keith said, tell, no, no, told no. everybody to show up 
at a certain place and time and well, they was, showed up. It was very, it was negotiated. It, it, was, it was negotiated. Organized. Okay. It was organized. It was organized. Like, okay. We're going to have a celebration. Okay. Yeah. We were saying that we're going to have, because at one point they were going to continue to like push off the date till it was perfectly wrapped mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And at one point we're like, it's never going to be perfectly wrapped up. There's always going to be something. So we said this date and what did that have been? That was 2004. 2004. 2004, okay. So on that date, we had a celebration mm -hmm. on the original, by the original mural. Okay. And for the trail to say, hey. Ranger Trail Trail's here. It's here. Okay. Ta-da. Okay. And then, and that was a very public thing. And, be, and we really felt that since it was a very public thing, that uh, <clears throat> all the other things can start happening. Okay. Like being a friends group. Like making sure uh -huh. it's on the budget. Like making sure, like remember, because remember, yeah. there is no, there was no agreement. In fact, how it was explained to me way back is that, and I don't even know who the two commissioners were at the time. Mm -hmm. It was a handshake deal. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Okay, so it wasn't even documented. Okay. So therefore, when so when we know the different entities, so even Cook County Forest Preserve. They plan and build and maintain trails. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. CDOT builds trails. They do not maintain trails. Park District maintains trails. So the relationship is now yeah. you build it, now you take it over. Now what you see now with all these other trails who now are coming mm -hmm. or are existing, it's very clear that, that they know. Mm -hmm. But at the time, that what I just illustrated was the, the kind of the Oh, yeah. Was that yeah. at that time, uh, the trail was not going to, they, they weren't open to uh, opening or accepting the trail because they had no yeah. real reason yeah. to. Wow, you know. there's so much history there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think each of you have so much history that I think we need to have a show that we where we have just one of you each by yourself and we just hear the story of the trail from your perspective. So I want to I want to ask uh, Peter a question um, because Peter you are the president of the Friends of the currently the president of the Friends of the Major Taylor Trail, you're vice president of the Major Taylor Trail Keepers. Um, so I kind of have three questions all in one as it relates to you sitting on both of those boards and being the, the number one leader in our city for the Major Taylor Trail. What is the difference between the two organizations? That's one question. How are those two organizations similar? Second question. And third question, how would you define or describe the relationship between those two organizations? It's funny, Brenda asked me a question. She already knows that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Yeah, of course. I, I wouldn't ask a question that I didn't know that. But I need, it, I need the people to hear me, from you. She needs for me to say it. So yes. the, um, what, the way we've seen it is, is that um, for after the Major Taylor Trail was built, it, it took our advocacy to be able to get the Major Taylor Trail recognized and um, um, Maintain and everything the way that it was supposed to 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 do. Uh, it gives me an opportunity to mention uh, Paula Robinson, who was somebody who yeah. was one of the original oh, yeah. people on the trail. And Paula's idea when we first started this was that the Major Taylor Trail would be a fun place and a place for public art and a place for learning for our community. And so when Brenda came on board and her uh, experience as an educator for. For, for many years, she began to start to work on uh, actually uh, finding the funding to do exactly that and to create the public art for us and, uh, and make the Major Taylor Trail that, that welcoming place, not just a place to ride bikes and, and to walk, but a place where you could learn something about Major Taylor and if we keep going, learn something about many other things as well. And so <clears throat> um, that's the, the, the relationship. And so um, the, the relationship is close. Um, we're also, the Major Taylor Trail, Trail is great, uh, but it's also in a community that needs m many, many different things. Yeah, yeah, and the Major so Taylor uh, Trail wants to be emblematic of the kinds of things that you can do uh, for yourself and for your community. Okay. So I uh, thank you so much. So in a nutshell, you would say that the, the and we have like a few minutes. The trail, major friends of the Major Taylor Trail focuses primarily on the trail. The Major Taylor Trail Keepers focuses on the trail, but they also have another initiative of the overall community and ends up being a funding 
seeking funds seeking to money. support the initiatives of the Friends of the Major Taylor Trail. Yes. And so those are those two boards are closely aligned, yes. and it's intentional that the boards overlap because the trail keepers will never do anything that the, tr the Friends of the Trail is not supportive of. And so we have like a few seconds left. And I may have to do a separate segment. What are the current needs of the trail? But I don't, I think we're going to run out of time. Yeah, I think it's weird. Um, We've gotten there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they're still airing. So what are the current needs of the trail? Um, the current needs of the trail is more safety. Um, the trail's been in, there for 20 years. Uh, a lot of things that were built 20 years ago need to be refreshed. Yeah. Uh, we need better crossings of streets. Yes. Um, we, we, we've got lightning, but those things have to be... Um, uh, consistent. We need uh, more uh, amenities for human beings like um, restrooms and water. Um, and, you know, the list couldn't go on and more public art. Yeah, and I'll have you come back in another segment and we'll just talk about the current needs of the trail. How can our viewers that want to get involved, how can they help support uh, the trail? Um, well, we have uh, a website for the trail keepers, okay. um, which is in the picture there at the bottom of the picture, yep. and um, we have a, 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 a fund me, a GoFundMe site that you can help with. We also, uh, on, on the, the website, you'll also find uh, information how you can come participate, ride the trail, mm -hmm. and come participate in our annual event, which is going Absolutely. to be in September. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you so much, Keith, for hanging out with me today to talk about the Major Taylor Trail. I'm going to have you both back on the show, and I want to thank all of our viewers. Uh, we'll see you again next month in January. In January, we should be off the trail, and our issue that we should talk about is uh, mental health, the stigma of mental health services in, in, in our community. Um, but that's a tentative topic. Uh, thanks again, everyone.